Welcome to New Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church Sunday service. Under the dynamic leadership of Reverend Dr. Lorenzo and April Neal, we are located at 2202 Decatur Street in the city with Soul, Jackson, Mississippi. Join us online at Facebook or YouTube. We are a church where God is our Father, Christ is our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit is our Comforter, and humanity is our family. Here are this week's announcements and weekly ministry opportunities. Join us for weekly prayer with the Southwest District, Mondays at 7 p.m. Dial 605-475-4749. Enter code 327-074, followed by the pound sign. Are you interested in helping New Bethel? Join our ministry team as a volunteer in media ministry, youth ministry, or our Christian education ministries. Are you in need of a listening ear? Sign up for our support groups. We offer pastoral counseling services. Email New Bethel Jackson MS at Gmail to learn more and sign up today. Join us for Bible study Wednesdays at 6 p.m. with Dr. Neal stream live on our church Facebook page. Gain insight to scripture that will bless you throughout the week. Join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. for our Sunday School. You will enjoy wonderful teaching and interaction with God's beloved people. Get your copy of Dr. Neal's book available on his website, LorenzoTNeal.org, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or anywhere you can access any book. Our mission is to minister to the social, spiritual, economic, and physical development of all people. Our vision is to be a church where all are welcome, loved, and accepted. Where God's word is explained and experienced on every level for every person. And where every person is real, relational, encouraging, authentic, and loving. Again, Welcome to Sunday Service. We're excited that you are here. Feel free to join in in worship and praise to God. Let's join the service in progress now. another day's journey this second Sunday of October we are glad to be in the service of the Lord so with excitement and enthusiasm let us praise God from whom all blessings flow praise God from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him above ye heavenly host praise father son and holy ghost
Good morning, our call to worship. We are followers of what is good, protected against those who might harm us. We are and we do. Blessed even if we should suffer for righteousness sake. We are and we do. Bold in the Lord, never afraid there are threats, nor are we troubled. We are and we do. Our hearts are sanctified, set apart, holy unto the Lord. We are and we do. Our souls are on guard. Ten thousand fold may arise, and host of sins may press hard to draw us from the skies. We are and we do. We have our hope in God who keep us from falling and will present us faultless. We are and we do. For it is better to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. We are and we do. Thank you. And that is the witness, uh, late witness Sunday litany that was written by the Reverend Beverly of White from the 12th Episcopal District. Our hymn this morning is hymn number 216, There Shall Be Showers of Blessings. There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. There shall be Season refreshing, sent from the Savior above. There should be showers of blessings, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sounds of the abundance of rain. There should be showers of blessing, send unto us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come now and honor thy word. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now on this, as on Jesus we call, showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need, mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, let's lift our voice and sing in this wonderful hymn of the church, there should be showers of blessings. There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of God. There shall be seasons refreshing, sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings. But for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessings, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. falling 
but for the showers be showers of blessing oh showers of blessing showers of blessing be mercy drops round us are falling but for the showers be Y'all hear that drummer showing out? <laughs> Amen. Amen. As we enter our moment of prayer and intercession, we solicit your prayers on behalf of all of our members here at New Bethel, those who are sick and shut in, Brother Earl Mayberry, the Johnsons, Carl Curtis, and Ada Johnson, for uh, the Bright family, for uh, uh, Sister Robert Burke, continue to pray for all of our members who are experiencing health and continue to pray for the Edwards family, continue to pray for our country, continue to pray for all of our elected officials, and pray for Congress, they are in mess. Uh, uh, pray for the Trump, yes, thank you, Sister. Sister Doris and Brother Willie Treble, please lift them up in your prayer, in your prayers. Pray for us. Sister Mosey, even though she's here, pray for, pray for her. Pray for Ida Porter, Sister Porter. Uh, many other names that I could call. Y'all yeah, call them. I don't mind. Let's call them. <laughs> Amen. Sister Alice Horn. Sister Ruby Parker. Yes, Amen. Pray, Sister Zena Price. Y'all pray for our family. My grandfather and uh, lost a nephew who was eulogized today in Chicago. So please pray for our family, my family. Michael Brown, pray for the Brown family. Pray for the Stallsworth family. Nothing wrong with them, they just need prayer. Pray for the Stamps family. Continue prayers for them. And just pray for every church door that's open in the name of Christ today, every preacher that's going to stand before the word, proclaim the word of God. Those who did it on yesterday, pray ye one for another. Paul Borden wrote a song or sang a song, had simple words and simply said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. And I believe that should be our prayer, let God move with us and through us on behalf of others, amen. Before Brother Walsh prays, we're going to sing a refrain of that song, just setting the mood, the motion, and setting the atmosphere, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't. Lord, if you're healing, Lord, if you're healing, healing in the season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, we come to thee this morning. First, we want to recognize that you are our creator. And you have given us more blessings than we deserve. So this morning, as we call on you, we want to recognize you. Thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, our redeemer. Now, Lord, as we come before thee today, we might have bridges that's difficult to cross. 
We might have mountains in our lives that are difficult to climb. We know that you are God of goodwill. We know that you are God of forgiven power. And we come this morning after giving you all of the thanks, asking you to bless us. We're here this morning, Lord, because of your blessing. We got up, we had food to eat, we had transportation, and we had the will to come here today. And we invite you to this congregation today that you would bless this minister, and we pray that you would bless his family, and that you would bless every member here based on their needs, dear Lord. Some might be sick, some might have worries, some might have financial issues, but you are giving God and you are merciful God. Please have mercy on us. We know that we're living in a world of much discord. Leaders have difficulties getting together, agreeing, and to try to do your will. Some will and some will not, dear Lord. But we ask that you would have mercy and fix this situation. It's beyond us, dear Lord. But we know, Lord, that if you fix it, it will be fixed and will be right. We ask that you would please bless each individual here today based on their needs. We pray for this community. We pray for our political leaders, dear Lord, because they are in dire need of your guidance. We pray that you would bless all of the musicians here today as they play melodically, expressing their gratitude for you. Now, Lord, again, I just want to say thank you so much for all of the blessings. And pray that you would guide us each day going forward as we leave here today. We know that you can, and we just ask you, Lord, to look down on us. We might be weak, Lord, but please give us the strength that we need. Now, Lord, as you have blessed us according to our needs, we just ask all of these blessings in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and in your words say, Amen. Please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. If you're blessing it this season, Lord. Good morning, church. I shall read the scripture for today. This is chapter 19 of Psalms. 
The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showing his handiwork. Day unto day utter speak, and night uh, showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor knowledge where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone, but through all the earth, and their word to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His doing, his going forth is from the ends of heaven, and his fruit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Testify of the Lord is sure, making his making wise the simple. The statue of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heat, the heart, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and is keeping of them there is a great reward. Who can command, who can understand his error? Cleanse thou me the secret thoughts. Keep back the sour servant also from the presumption of uh, sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgressions, transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O Lord, my strength and my redemption, my redeemer. Thank you. From all that dwells, from all that dwells. Summary of the Decalogue. Hear what Christ your Savior says. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. All these two commandments depend on the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We want to take this time to welcome you this morning, not only to New Bethel's Sunday service, but also to our Lay Witness Sunday. Uh, sponsored by the lay organization of the church. 
and we're excited about this. This is a connectional lay witness Sunday, so churches across the connection are observing this along with us here at New Bethel. And to uh, before we go into the announcements, uh, Dr. Jernigan would like to come and make it a heel on behalf of the lay organization. the lay organization we just want to say we appreciate all of you being here this morning and um, just want to make a couple of statements about what is the lay organization all about um, as president uh, currently president of the lay organization we are encouraging every member of this church to become a member of the lay organization your participation serves as the strengthening of our denomination as well as our church so we need all of you to be a part of this organization. This is the only organization where everyone is a member in the church. Although we do require, well, we don't require, but we ask that you uh, give $5 a month for dues. It comes out to be $60 a year. And we meet uh, each fourth Sunday. And uh, so we're asking all of you all to participate and become a part of that or this organization. Now, what is the lay organization all about? Uh, we do have some objectives that we are trying to accomplish. Uh, one of the things that we are trying to do is to create love and appreciation of the history and principle of African Methodism. So we're all African Methodists. So that, what, what does that mean to us? We know as to who's the founder of this church. We wanna create a love also for our founder, who is Richard Allen. And, and Richard Allen, um, but to keep his memory alive, we need to make sure that we practice those concepts and those tents that he was all about. And that was fair and justice for everyone. And that's what we need to do. We need to respect and, um, our constitutional authority of this church. Um, being part of it also means that we have, we talked about this morning in church, rules and regulations. And Sunday school. So we have rules and regulations that we need to follow that goes along with our church as African Methodists. Stimulate and educate the laity in the total program of the church. Uh, we have organizations here in the church and we need everyone to, to involve themselves in one of the organizations, at least one other organization of the church. We have the Women's Missionary Society, they are about to elect officers, and we need all of the women to make sure that they participate. All the offices are open now, so if there's something that you are interested in, in uh, being a part of, please go ahead and make your application available to us. The, the uh, lay organization, we will be having our elections very soon. All of those offices will also be open, so if there's something in the lay organization that you want to do, it's open for you to participate as well. We need to study the discipline and um, learn the laws of the church. Uh, lots of times we just do things haphazardly. Let's work together and try to find out what is it that the AME Church wants us to do and let's try to work to get those goals accomplished. Encourage our, our financial support of the church and its programs. We know that we have three main programs every year, Women's Day, Men's Day, and Family and Friends Day. We've all been given an assessment on those programs as to what we would like for members to pay. So we already know them from the beginning. If we don't, I'm gonna just recite it right now. The men's may vary. They may come with $500 or they may come with $300 or less. But whatever it is, we're gonna try to work with them. But we know that the men's are gonna do what they need to do. The women, $250. Uh, the Mr. Ross is saying something. I don't know what he's saying, but he's saying something. Uh, the Family and Friends Day is $50. Uh, so let's, let's try to get all of this done. And then the different auxiliaries, they have their dues. As I said, the uh, lay dues, $60 a year. I think Women's Missionary, $60 a year. Uh, the choir, $60 a year. Students, $60 a year. So it's not much, we can do it all in December. A lot of us get them 13 checks, so them 13 checks, let's go ahead on and get that done <laughs> and, and get it out of the way. And um, finally, uh, teach and practice stewardship. 
and work with the youth and teach them Methodism. So we have started back our youth coming to church, work with them. So let's bind behind our young people as uh, lay and uh, these other auxiliaries and try to get them to be part of uh, to, to be part of our program as well. Let's not forget our young people, put them in everything that we do. We should have a young person involved in it. The lay organization, we do accept, um, we do want young people to be a part of our organization as well. So I thank you, Reverend Neal, for this time. I hope uh, it wasn't too, I think it was, a. I think it was a good information for everybody. Mr. Ross is steady making faces up here, but we'll, <laughs> we'll go along with that too, you know, and everything. And uh, Jackson State did win yesterday. Hey. <laughs> Y'all see she she y'all see what she did at the end, huh? Her and uh, Sister Cargan doing low blows this morning. <laughs> Sister Cargan said, "I need to support a team that wins." <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Their homecoming is next weekend, so they they you know they they feeling themselves a little bit. <laughs> Uh, amen. Thank you, Dr. Jernigan, for uh, the information regarding the lay organization of this church. The lay organization, laity, are the driving force behind anything we do here at New Bethel, and we're grateful for all of you and all of your support. Uh, uh, I get a charge to a church. I get a charge. I get a certificate to come to a church uh, to oversee the work of the lay. The lay are the ones that does do the work, and I get to magnify that work at the end of the year at the conference, doing the conference report. So I'm grateful for you all, and as stated before, we want you to get involved on every level uh, of the lay organization, as well as uh, activities here at the church. Here are a few other things we want to bring to your attention. Next Sunday, uh, uh, October the 15th will be our Christian Education Sunday, and we're highlighting our church school. And not only that, but I'm so excited about our church school superintendent, Brother Washington, who is doing an amazing job in, as, the, as leading this, uh, the church school as well as teaching. And this brother got some insight that I had to go to seminary for. Amen. So I'm very grateful for him and for our Sunday school teachers. And we are still, we are in need of teachers, so if you are interested, if you feel the Lord leading you to do so, we invite you to be a part of the church school. Um, uh, not just church school, but also teach in, in any other office that you uh, think that you believe you can help here in the ministry of New Bethel. On Sunday, the uh, 22nd, the fourth Sunday, we will have our first church conference, and this will be the organizational conference. Uh, that will be uh, the 22nd immediately following service. We're going to try to do it as quickly as we can. We will be electing our trustees, and uh, you will have the appointment of the stewards, uh, board of stewards, as well as uh, commission leaders and organizations, and um, if you're interested in serving in the ministry here in any capacity, let us know, and we want you to join. Um, also, that, Saturday, that Sunday is, of course, our YPD Sunday, and we're excited that our own First Lady, Sister April Neal, will be the speaker for that Sunday morning, and we're, I'm excited about that. I'm excited if nobody else is. <laughs> So we, we hope that you uh, have your youth out for that Sunday. And on the fifth Sunday, the WMS will be uh, having their fifth Sunday mission service. And we have a wonderful guest speaker for that. But following that service, they will be electing officers for the Women's Missionary Society here, the local society here. And um, if you are interested in serving in any office officially, uh, you can get your nominating form and from uh, the, uh, Dr. Jernigan and Sister 
Brookings. You can get your nominating form from there. And please, once you complete that form, return it to them by October the 22nd so that you can be eligible to be on the ballot for elections. And they will have those elections uh, immediately following the service on um, the fifth Sunday. Uh, the last thing we want to bring to your attention is that the 8th Episcopal District planning meeting uh, has location has changed. It was scheduled to be uh, in Bonner Campbell on December the 1st and the 2nd. The location has changed. It will now be in Greenwood, Mississippi, uh, December the 1st and the 2nd, followed by December 3rd uh, with a Christmas concert that will also be held there in Greenwood at the Greenwood uh, Civic Center, I believe. So if you're planning to attend the 8th, 8th Episcopal District planning meeting December the 1st through the 2nd, it is no longer will be at Bonner Campbell Complex in Edwards. It will now be at the Civic Center in Greenwood, Mississippi, not Greenville, Greenwood, Mississippi. Uh, and those are all the announcements. Oh, and that, that's, at that meeting, he will be ordaining uh, all candidates and who have been elected uh, as itinerant deacon and as itinerant elder. Those candidates will be ordained at the planning meeting. And um, I think also persons who were elected from the electoral college to the general conference would also receive their credentials at the planning meeting. And those are all the announcements that we have for you this morning. We're grateful again for all of you who thought it not Robert to be with us this morning. And we pray that as we continue in worship that you would just uh, continue to celebrate the Lord with us. Having said all of that, we will just have a congregational song and then go into the worship for this morning, the message for this morning. And it's a simple congregation song that simply says, How great is our God. Splendor of a king, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide the splendor of his voice, the splendor of his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, sing how great, how great is our God. How great. He's the name above our name. He's the name above our name. He is worthy of our praise. And our hearts will sing how great is our God. He's the Come on, everybody, sing how great, how great is our God. Sing with me how great. Oh, sing how great, great. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Sing how great, how great is our God. Amen. Well, I, I was struggling a little bit up here. <laughs> Amen. If you have your Bibles, we invite you to turn with us to the Gospel of John. 
Gospel of John, chapter 9. And we're going to be highlighting verses 30 to 34. Y'all ignore the slide. I somehow didn't save, so it's not on there correctly. Gospel of St. John, chapter 9. Verses 30 through 34. If you have your mobile devices, your iPad, or your physical Bible, we invite you to turn that with us. And we have it be known by saying, Amen. From the New American Standard Bible, you'll find these words. The man answered them and said to them, Well, here it is an amazing thing that you do not know where he is from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does his will, he hears him. Since the beginning of time, it has never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person that born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin. And here, and are you teaching us? So they put him out. And if you allow me just for a few moments, I want to talk on this lay witness Sunday from the subject, witnessing to the know-it-alls. Witnessing to the know-it-alls. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to your service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul, my head, my heart look up with a steadfast hope and let my will be lost in thine. Speak, Holy Spirit, as only you can. And as always, this your servant asks that you allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are indeed my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Witnessing to the know-it-alls. Have you ever been in an argument with somebody that always has an answer to everything you say? Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. They just have to say something. My wife is sitting in the audience, and uh, she say that person is me. And I can't argue against her because I'm one of those know-it-alls. You know, you get all this edumacation, and, and you get a few letters behind your name, and all of a sudden, you know it all. Amen, likes. <laughs> Shuck it, duck it, quack, quack. And, and, and the thing about that is that uh, we are living in a world where discourse, modern discourse, is all about what you know, whether it's based in facts or not. There's a counter to everything, and we, we can watch news shows and talk shows, and all we hear is commentary about topics uh, versus or against certain ideas, certain people, whatever it may be. There's somebody got something to say about everything. And if it's not on a newscast, it's on TikTok. If it's not on TikTok, it's on YouTube or Instagram. Everybody has something to say about everything. And most of the time, it's the loudest ones that get the most voices heard. Y'all ain't got to say amen. We got family members who know how to talk their head off to everybody. And they will say whatever they're going to say and don't care about whether it hurts your feelings or not because they got to say what they got to say. Other times, it's persons in authority like preachers. Uh, it grieves me that we have a lot of false preachers in the pulpit saying things that will make themselves get a little money in their wallet, discrediting others when they call them to accountability, and then have the nerve to call other folks sinners. 
when they are too. Lord, did I just say that? We, we live in a world where even when God is speaking to people, people don't believe God speaks. When God is moving through people, people don't believe God is moving. We live in a world that is ultimately confusing to those of us who grew up with some sense of order and identity. We knew when to say, especially as children, when we were growing up, I don't know about y'all, when I was growing up, I knew my place. I, I know if an adult said something, uh, they, they would say, grown folks talking, you need to go. Uh, uh, when, when, uh, when conversations were happening uh, and, and uh, we thought we could chip into the conversation, they just give us a look. Like, uh, you ain't got nothing to say. This ain't got nothing to do with you. We live in that kind of world, and so when we hear things that are supernatural, metaphysical, we tend to question not the event, but why the event? And in the text today, we find that, that, that similarity. The entire chapter of this, this book, this, this entire chapter is dedicated to one person, one individual, and the dilemma that he was delivered from that folk had a problem with. The, the story starts off, the narrative starts off where Jesus sees this man, and this man has been declared blind from birth. And the question is posed to him, who sinned, his mother, his father, or him? Not why was he in this condition begging and what can we do to help? The question was, who sinned first? And boy, y'all been in church long enough. Y'all know there's a lot of folk that can do that. Call you out on your sin before questioning what God got for you. What God may be doing for you. They're questioning your condition and saying, uh, something wrong with him or her because of their condition. And Jesus is in the presence and they still don't question what Jesus can do. Jesus, can you heal this person who is blind and begging? But Jesus, what sin did that person do to get in their condition? That's how some of us church folk are. Jesus answers them with a statement. He doesn't answer the question directly. He said, neither one of them saying, this is for the glory of God. And then he approaches this person that he should not have any interaction with as a traveling itinerant rabbi who, who, who is doing miracles. He shouldn't really have an, a, an interaction with it, but he comes to this person. He interacts with this person, and then when the person expresses the desire to be healed, he does something unusual. He gets into the ground. He spits, and he makes a saw, puts it on his eyes, and tell him, now, this is what you go do. Go wash in the pool of Siloam and when you finish washing you will receive that thing that you thought you would never get and he does it he goes he washes and he receives his sight and all of a sudden everybody around him begins to question what's really going on people recognized him and and, and they realized he was no longer begging, but he was walking by sight. Uh, Y'all know, I, sometimes I wish they would, I, I wonder if they were Negroes, because cause they were saying, is that that boy? Wasn't he on the side begging? And y'all know, how, no, that, that, that ain't him, that's just somebody look like him. That's what the text says. That, no, that's, that is not him. That's somebody who looks like him. And he said, no, it's me. I, I am the one that you saw begging. I am the one that you saw disabled. I am the one that you discounted. And now you see me as I truly am, a healed man, healed by this wandering prophet, Jesus of Nazareth. And all the folk just begin to question, well, who healed you? I don't know his name. I just know I'm healed. Well, what did you do? I asked. 
Did you have to give him? I didn't have to give anything. He rewarded me with my sight. Don't y'all get what I'm saying here? Don't you hear the words coming out of my mouth? I don't know why. I don't know how. All I know is I was blind, but now I see. That ought to be somebody's testimony. I was walking in sin, but now I see. I was broken, busted, and disgusted, but now here I am able to see clearly now. The, the, all the stuff is gone. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. And they, and, and, and they didn't take his answer as sufficient enough. They went to the authorities, the religious authorities, the Pharisees. And they say this man was healed by this person, Jesus. And, and we're convinced that it may have been a fraudulent miracle. We, we can't really believe that he's healed, that he sees. He's telling us what he believes happened, but, but he wasn't good enough to get anything from God. He was a sinner. Y'all know, y'all, y'all know that's what folk think of you sometimes when God begins to pour out his blessings. He, he opens up the windows of heaven and he pours out blessings. You don't have room enough to, 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 to receive. And folk look at you instead of celebrating and praising God with you. They say, no, that person's still a sinner. They don't deserve anything from God. I remember how they used to be. Yesterday, I saw them walking. They weren't walking like they were saved. Amen. I, I saw them going close to the liquor aisle. They may have had some crown roll in that bag. I don't know, but it was a brown paper bag. And, and, and the Pharisees inquire of this young man. They say, young man, what happened? And they say, well, this man came and and, and I, I, I was begging, he recognized me, and he healed me. And they said, well, when did he do it? Well, it, it, it was on the Sabbath. Well, son, you may have sight, but you got sight from a sinner because he heals you on the wrong day. Because uh, you ain't supposed to do anything on the Sabbath. And, and if he heals you on the Sabbath, that, 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 that shows up he ain't from God. Because if he were from God, he would know he shouldn't be doing anything on the Sabbath. They discounted the man's healing. Not only that, they had to ask for mom and daddy. Like, what? Get this man's mother's daddy. Because we can't trust what he say. They asked the mama and daddy, was this man born blind? They say, yes. But why are you asking us? He old enough to talk for himself. He's old enough. If, if that's his testimony, that's his testimony. We can't, we can't testify for what God did for him. Let me put a pin there. See, this, this part of the problem I, I, I hate in the church, we can't celebrate when God does something for somebody else. I don't know about you, but when God blesses somebody else that I'm connected to, I shout. Because I know if he did it for them, he can do it for me. And I don't have to wait. Whenever he does it, as long as he does it, I'm going to be satisfied with it. He, his parents said he's old enough to talk for himself. And they go back to him, and this is what we find in the text leading into it. They come back to him and ask him the same question. And then he said, wait a minute. I I get it now. I see why you hating. You want to follow him too. You want what I got. Well, I'm glad that you want what I got. Because you need to have what I have. Uh, Because what God did for me, it is for me. But if he did it for me, he can do it for you. And you would think the religious folk would celebrate. Yeah, that's what we want. No, they... They get into them deeper and they say, no, we're just trying to save you because both of you sinned. The man who healed you sinned and you being healed sinned. In verse 30 is where we find the the text. The man answered them and said, well, you know what? (laughs) It's amazing. You don't know who it was. 
that did this for me. It's, it's amazing. You don't want to join me in worshiping and celebrating. It's amazing. You are discounting me. But can I tell you something? If, 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 if he sinned and he went from God, then I don't know what to do. First thing, if you're going to be a, a witness to know it all, you, you, you should witness about how amazing it is to know what Jesus can do. You ought to be able to witness about how amazing it is to know what Jesus can do. I don't know about you, but I know Jesus to be a healer. I, we got some testimonies in here where how God healed when nobody else could do anything. I don't know about you, but I got a testimony about God being a provider when I had nothing else. I, I learned that he is my shepherd. I shall not want. I, I wish I had somebody who could shout with me. I, I know what it is to know that Jesus is a deliverer. Huh? He may not have delivered me from a, a bad stuff, but he delivered me out of all of my illnesses, all of my sicknesses, all of my troubles. Is there anybody who can testify God is a deliverer? Deliverer! Uh, I don't know about you, but I can testify if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where? I feel like shouting right now. Uh, um, you should test about, about how good God is, how amazing God is. And just because the miracle may not be great, you woke up this morning. Just because the miracle not, may not be exciting and newsworthy, you're walking around with the breath of God in you. You ought to be witnessing about how amazing it is just to know that he can. And if he can, then he will. Secondly, uh, you ought to be witnessing even when they threaten your faith. I mentioned earlier about discourse. Uh, the craziness of the discourse the world is experiencing here, more specifically, in America. The young man replied to them, saying, "says I don't understand how you don't know what he can do. I don't understand how you're saying he's not from God. I don't understand how you're trying to discount what he did for me because the only thing I know." is he opened my eye. Uh, I, I, I can't say what he did for somebody else. I know I don't have to beg anymore. I know I don't have to be led by anybody anymore. Like my parents say, I can speak for myself because I know what God has done for me. The older I get, the more I like to say that. I, I, when I was young, I, I didn't know any better. I was preaching what I heard. I, I was preaching what I, uh, I thought other, pe other people wanted to hear. I, I didn't know any better. But once I got older and experienced God for myself, uh, once I knew that he was a way maker, once I knew that he is a, a battle axe in a time of trouble, once I knew who God really is, uh, he is my lily of the valley, my rose of Sharon, my bright and morning star. I wish I had somebody who could just testify that they know who he is. And once I learned who he is, I didn't care about the threats anybody said. L listen, listen, listen. These folk, these know-it-alls said to the man who had the experience of being blind and now seeing and him telling them their testimony, him telling them his testimony, they responded to him saying, wait a minute, y'all take a good look at how I'm dressed right now. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> you must not know who we are. Don't you see I got Reverend Doctor in front of my name? You see PhD behind there? You, you see all the mother letters? Don't you know I, I studied long and well to get the titles I got? You see the suit I'm wearing? I, I, I earned that because I, I'm distinguished and I am a great prognosticator. And who are you to try to tell me what God is? Uh, who, who, all you had was 
your eyes open. You don't know the scriptures like I do. All you did, you used to be a beggar on the side of the road. You ain't got no education. You ain't got no good shoes and good suit. Uh, you ain't got to sit uh, and stand up here. How can you tell me what I already know? Uh, it, it amazes me how, how bougie we can be sometimes. Uh, it amazes me how, how, how many times we discount what God can use. He used a donkey, didn't he? Uh, if, if he used the donkey, don't be... No, I ain't going to say that. Uh, never discount what God can do, even when there are others trying to discredit and disqualify you. You need to witness that God can use anybody. If he can use anything, Lord, you can use me. And I don't want rocks crying out for me. When I can do it for myself. I, I don't know about you, but I like to brag about what I do when I do what I do. But when a God does it, I don't have to brag because he gets all the glory. When he does it, he does it by himself. And he does it above what I can expect or think. That's why I don't care. I, I would testify and witness to the goodness of God. Because if he does anything, he does it great. These folk had the nerve to put him out of the synagogue because he got healed by the right person on the wrong day. He got the blessing that he needed. Wasn't sanctioned by the folk who thought they owned God. Wasn't sanctioned by the folk who thought that God could only use certain people. Wasn't sanctioned by the folk who thought that they had the whole thing of God in a box and God could only say what they said he said do what they said he could do go where he said they said he could go but they don't know God and this man said well y'all put me out I don't care following verse 34 the man reconnects with Jesus and it's interesting because Jesus reconnects with this man and questions him. And the man responds to Jesus' question like, well, I know I'm healed. And I believe you are who you say you are. Just because I've had this one experience and everybody discounted me. Everybody disqualified me. The folk I thought who should be celebrating me, they kicked me out, saying that I was the wrong person. I was still in sin because I got the blessing that you got from me. They kicked me out. And Jesus assured him that he had more than just a healing, that now he was on the path to eternal life. And this is the last thing I want us to get after this. Not only should you witness about how amazing it is knowing what Jesus can do. Not only should you witness about uh, uh, whatever God has done, can do, will do, even when folk threaten you, the last thing you ought to do is you ought to witness to remind folk and remind people that Jesus came to get blind people to see. But Jesus had some of those religious folk with him and his group following him. And the text says, that the Pharisees were with him. Once they saw the encounter with him and the blind man, and Jesus said, I came to get those people who don't see to see, those who are blind to see. The Pharisees asked him a question, said, are we blind? Are we blind? And the response that closes out this chapter is very interesting because Jesus, Jesus lays it down hard to them. Jesus says to them, you are blind because you're telling everybody you can see. Yeah, I got to get this. Say, you're so fixated on proving everybody else wrong because you think you're right, that you are so blind. God forbid as a pastor, 
as a servant leader, I get so caught up in myself that I can see everybody's log in their eye. I can't see the one in mine. God forbid that I get so lofty and high-minded that as I witness to other folk, I'm simply reminding them that they're still sinners instead of telling them about the one who can save them from sin. Uh, I, 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 I hate the church experience that we're in in this moment because folk are living in a blind world in the church. Many of them have no idea that they might be on their way somewhere they don't want to go because there's, there's a gospel that's not being preached to them. Uh, preachers are standing and telling them to command money to come to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I'm commanding money to come to me. If money coming to me now. Y'all can say that if you want to. But if I don't say that you must repent of your sins, as the author in Second Chronicles 7 said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, then will I come. The dilemma that we're in in the world today where we have a lot of people who are deconstructing Christianity and renouncing Christianity and doing all of this because they can't find themselves in the book. And they'd rather live outside of the book because they haven't found the one who wrote the book. They're living outside of the, the realm of the ark of safety because the one they're looking to, they, they have found and is not the one they thought it should be. And beloved of God, witnessing right now in this day and age is more than just knocking on doors and giving out pamphlets. Witnessing in this day and age requires that you be a true disciple of Christ. Because folk look at you more now than ever before. Folk look in the captive preachers doing bad things. Amen. Folk look into the average Christian and trying to entrap them to get them to deny or denounce their faith and live miserable just like they are. We are in a day and age where we are witnessing to know it all folk. Folk who can tell you more about the Bible from watching TikTok video than from reading it themselves. Folk who can tell you, well, I prayed to Jesus and I didn't get what I asked for, so he must not be real. Folk who say, well, uh, God ain't real because why do good, bad things happen to good people? Why is there still war? Why is there trouble in Haiti? Why is there trouble in South and North Sudan? Why are Nigerians killing, Nigerian Muslims killing, killing Nigerian Christians? Why is there trouble in the Congo? And why is there up unrest all over places in Africa? Why, where, where is God in that? So, so if, if God is not fixing that, how can he fix me? And if he can't fix me, how can he fix you? And if he can't fix you, neither one of us need him. And, and that is the plight that this man was facing as the know-it-alls came to him and tried to tell him what he experienced from God wasn't real, wasn't authentic. And we need to tell for Jesus still moves. Jesus still heals. Jesus still works. And if he did it, then he hasn't stopped yet. I can admit as I close, I am a know-it-all. But every now and then when my head gets knocked up side the wall, I have to humble myself and remind myself, I don't know it all. I, I don't know it all. I may know a lot, but I don't know it all. And sometimes the lot that I know isn't right. Oh, but I'm glad I know Jesus. 
the author and finisher of my faith. I'm glad I know Jesus, the one who died for me. I'm glad I know Jesus. Huh? When they buried him, when they crucified him, and they buried him, and they left him there and said, ain't nothing going to happen. I'm glad I know Jesus who got up on the third day. I'm glad I know Jesus who sits at the right hand of God the Father. I'm glad I know Jesus. Because knowing Jesus means uh, that I have everything that I need to know. Uh, knowing Jesus know, uh, means that I can follow where he leads me. Uh, knowing Jesus means uh, that when he sends me, he sends me to cast out demons. Uh, he sends me to heal the sick. Uh, he sends me to go preach the gospel. Uh, I'm glad today uh, I'm not a know-it-all, uh, but I know the one who knows it all. Uh, I know the one uh, who made it all. Uh, and if the one uh, who knows it all uh, and made it all uh, is in me, uh, greater uh, is he uh, that is in me than he that is in the world. Is there anybody here uh, who's glad to know Jesus uh, is uh, everything uh, that you need? And if he's everything that you need, you don't need to know it all like me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that just as this young man who experienced of healing, the opening of his eyes, who experienced the diminishing of his miracle, the dismissal of the prophet who gave him sight, even the dismissal of him from his faith assembly and yet he still held on to you you gave him more than sight you gave him eternal life and may we God in this world full of know-it-alls full of people questioning our faith questioning our world questioning you your existence and everything you are our all in all May we be witnesses to your amazing grace, your amazing gift and move. May we be witnesses in the midst of threats against our faith and what you're doing. And may we be witnesses, Father, to those who are still blind and cannot see. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's so extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. The gospel message is that Jesus Christ came, he died, he rose again from the dead that you may have life abundantly. And that if you confess in your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you don't know him in the pardon of these sins, we invite you to know him just as you are. With that one plea, but that his blood was shed for you. This is the invitation to Christian discipleship, and if you need a luck, local home, this is your invitation to New Bethel. Just as I am, let's sing. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And as thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I, I is there one, and waiting not to cleanse my soul from what of blood to thee whose blood can clean each spot O oh, Lamb of God I come I you may be seated we have done as the Lord has commanded us and there is still room Listen, to those of you who are watching, if you made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as Savior, 
the you that come in and accept the salvation, let us know you made that decision. If you're looking for a church home, you made a decision to make New Bethel your church home, lead to come and join to let us know that you want to be a part of our virtual or in-person family. And we welcome you to the family of God as a new believer and to the family of New Bethel. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Amen. As we shift now from our moment of worship through singing and preaching into our moment of worship through giving, we thank and praise God as we are uh, in the 10th month. This year is going by very fast, but yet God is very faithful to us. And if you have been quickened by the Lord to sow into this ministry, we invite you to, to do so. Give towards your offerings, your gifts of missions your tithe, and your benevolence. Those of you who are watching, if you'd like to give to New Bethel, there are two ways that you can give. You can give the primary way through the address on your screen. You can mail in your offering or drop it off at the church, however the Lord allow, allows you to do so. But if you'd like to give virtually, you can give by way of Givelify. That information should also be there on your screen. You can give there, and we appreciate however the Lord allows you to minister by way of your financial resources. Those of you who are present, if you'd like to give, we invite you to give now. If you need an envelope, let it be known. Those of you who have an envelope, let's lift that envelope up to the Lord and go to the Lord in blessing. God, we believe we can't beat your giving no matter how we try, that you have given to us good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. You have poured out your blessings upon us, and we give, God, not grudgingly, nor out of necessity, but we give cheerfully and liberally. Allow your rivers of waters to flow in abundance to us as we give, enlarge our territory, expand us so that we may be fruitful in all good things. We thank you for those who desire to give, Father God, who don't have the means that you provide for them. But as we give, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do for this local assembly in Jesus' name. Amen. Come along, God. People, God, let's give as God has afforded us. things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise God for those you thought not Robert to share and get submission. Okay. One announcement and yeah, Sister Cargan has an announcement. Good morning, church. Good morning. I just want to remind everybody that next Sunday we will be celebrating our pastor's appreciation. That was um, not announced this morning in the announcements. Uh, we're asking all members for $25 and all auxiliaries for the same. Thank you. Amen. I forgot about that. Mr. Know-it-all, that's right. Mr. Know-it-all, forgetting about his own appreciation. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all, I know y'all watching and disregard that last statement. <laughs> Sister George, so I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> anyway, we thank and praise God. Just want to remind uh, again, next Sunday, Christian Education Sunday, uh, focusing on our church school. And uh, please come and join us for that. Also, fourth Sunday, not only is it Youth Sunday, but will be our local church conference immediately following the service where we will be uh, electing our officers for that year. 
and uh, we're excited about all that and all the other announcements that be happening. Join us for Bible study stream on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. We invite you to join us for that. And that's it. Let's stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom Now may the grace, peace, the love of God the Father, and his most blessed Son, Jesus the Christ, and may the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit be with us now and always, and the people of God saying, Go in peace. The Lord be with you.